Okay, welcome back to the Tennessee Frugal Craftsman. I'm Brian Peterson. Today we are going to fix a few tools that uh, got broke around the property. Uh, instead of just going buying new things, I think it's best probably to fix if we if we fix them if we can. So that's what we're going to do today for the first uh, hour or so. And so I have some stuff out here. I want you to have a look at what I'm doing uh, because I am, as I note, very frugal. Uh, this is actually an old sign I found on the property when I was cleaning it off. Uh, it is you know, it's an old for sale sign, probably when the property was sold way back in the day, uh, probably about 50 years ago. So I get left there in the grown over in the grass and whatnot. So I'm going to use the metal. This is fairly thick metal. I'm going to use this metal to actually uh, fix my wheelbarrow. It, uh, I have a plastic wheelbarrow and it it uh, got a crack in it. So I've got some tools there, some pop rivets and my tin snips and whatnot. So I'm gonna cut some pieces off that and take them out to the property and pop rivet them over the hole that I have in my wheelbarrow, the crack. I also have a problem with my, my rake. Uh, this is, the end is starting to come out on it. So I'm going to to refix that, or try to fix it, I should say. So, I'm gonna be working on that, I'm gonna hot glue that back together. Uh, so, I could have just went and bought a new wheelbarrow, but at 50 to $100, why waste the money? So that's what I'm gonna to do to start out with this morning. I'll come back to you in a minute. I'm not gonna run this while it's really, really loud. The uh, grinder because I've got to grind off a few of these bolts here that are holding this on they're all rusted but I can still use the metal itself so I'll catch you in a few minutes okay welcome back uh, my battery died so I had to do some uh, charging but I've since got pretty much everything ready to go here to fix the wheelbarrow so the last thing I was doing when I was talking to you before, is I was getting ready to cut some steel all right I did that you can actually see what I did is lined the the piece of the steel up together made them both the same size and then I drilled holes directly through them where I'm going to put the pop rivets you have to make sure that both sheets are drilled together on a flat surface that's usually the best way to do it then what I did you can see here this is the this is the crack in the wheelbarrow that I've got to fix. You see where I fixed some other holes here before. So what we're going to do is we're just going to turn the wheelbarrow back over here. I'll show you what I have. So what I've done is I've pop riveted or uh, drilled holes. I put the sheet, the piece of uh, plating down here. So I'll just grab one of these pieces of plating. Show you what I did. I put the piece of plating, the right one here. There we go. Down on the the uh, wheelbarrow. Then I drilled holes through all of those holes. So what we actually have now is all the holes matching. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one plate down and begin to pop rivet it together and put the other plate on the other side around here and so you actually have two levels two layers and you can see where I've done this with an earlier mend here and over there so I put one piece on one side and you come over you can see the other piece on the other side where it's pop riveted through now in this case I'm using eighth inch quarter by quarter inch pop rivets and so I'll get this, start getting this together, and then I'll pick it up in a minute and show you more. Okay, I'm back. Uh, I got this wheelbarrow probably about 12, 10 or 12 years ago, right around there. And I know that what happens over a period of time is this is a plastic uh, wheelbarrow. Um, and the plastic does get brittle over time and so it can even though it's an eighth of an inch thick it can 
split and that's what's been happening as I've been you know piling lumber in it and of course every now and again a hard piece of hardwood will hit it and uh, put a hole in it and I, I've had now one two three four four or five holes in it uh, I don't know whether I can make it survive much longer I've got most of the property now clean as I've been working uh, here but just wanted to show you the finished product and, and exactly how I did that so I'll pull in here. You can see that I put in a series of rivets. They're about every inch and a half, two inches apart. I think I've got about 35 rivets in that particular uh, mend. And uh, the other ones have been holding very well. I did those a month or so ago. Those have held very well. Uh, the key is, like I said, for these, is to make sure that you put a secondary piece on the underside so it gives a little bit more double reinforcement of your of your uh, work and so you've technically got an eighth of an inch of of the uh, thickness of the wheelbarrow plus what another eighth of an inch of metal and like I said this this holds very well so we're ready to go back at it and so instead of paying fifty two hundred dollars on a new wheelbarrow because everything else on this is perfectly fine uh, that's my fix and like I said it's it's a lot cheaper to fix one spend a few dollars on some pop rivets than it is to actually uh, spend money on a whole new wheelbarrow uh, just so you know that those are eighth inch as I noted before eighth inch by quarter inch rivets so uh, you can get those at your local Home Depot, Lowe's or whatever. That's all I did is just got a cheap rivet gun, had it on hand for this very purpose if I need to fix anything like this. And of course I'm also going to be using a rivet gun later hopefully for doing the soffit and putting, uh, kind of riveting the soffit, the metal soffit together on the house. So that's how I fix a wheelbarrow. Hopefully this was helpful for you. We will see you later.